After World War II, control of the former Axis territory was split between the Allies. As you know, the Soviets took the East, while America, Britain, and France took the West. Tensions between the two sides were already starting to rise, even during the war. The first time these tensions came to a boiling point was only a few years after the war, in Berlin. On June 18, 1948, the Western Allies announced that they were promoting the Deutsche Mark as the legal tender in Germany. The Soviet Union was outraged that a Western capitalist currency might be used in East Germany. In retaliation, they cut off all travel in and out of Berlin by train or the Autobahn and announced that they would introduce their own currency. Within a matter of days, the blockade became such a big deal that the Soviet military forces stopped the transport of American military forces. They began a massive anti-Western propaganda campaign. By June 24th, any route of travel between West Germany and Berlin was totally cut off. The Western powers reacted with their own blockade. At this point, the Western allies realized that they had made a serious mistake when negotiating the sectors. They had never established a protected route in and out of Berlin. Furthermore, their armies had been significantly reduced since the war ended, whereas the Soviets maintained their massive army. To make up for their numerical inferiority, America hoped to threaten the Soviets with nuclear weapons. America planned to use hundreds, but in 1948 only owned about 50. The only atomic-capable bombers they had were silver-plate B-29 superfortresses, of which only 35 would be available. It seems that the Third World War was imminent. Finally, the Americans came up with a solution. There had been three corridors negotiated for safe air travel to Berlin. If they were to take cargo planes and refuse to back down, the Soviets couldn't claim it as a military threat and had to either let them go or shoot down humanitarian planes. When America talked to Britain to see if they could assist, they discovered that the RAF had already been running a few small airlifts. Two countries worked together to calculate that about one and a half thousand tons of food and three and a half thousand tons of fuel were needed each day. All the C-47 Skytrains America currently had available would have to run about 100 round trips per day just to get 400 tons delivered. Eventually, between America, Great Britain, and Australia, there were enough planes to attempt to get the job done. On June 24, 1948, the first American planes delivered relief to Berlin, with British following four days later. At first, the planes were averaging around 90 tons a day, but soon got up to 1,000. All the same, this was nowhere near enough supplies to sustain Berlin for very long, and the USAF was inexperienced in airlifts. On August 13th, the weather was terrible, resulting in bad visibility, even by radar, and a number of minor crashes on the runway. From this point on, new safety regulations were implemented. In Berlin, civilian volunteers started to make up the bulk of the unloading crew. Some American pilots began tossing chocolate and other candies attached to small parachutes out of their plane to the Berlin children. The Soviets realized that if they didn't react, they may lose the stalemate of the blockade. They began making it impossible for non-communist members of the German parliament to make it to sessions. America encouraged the people of Berlin to stand up to this. On September 9th, Huge protests broke out around the Reichstag and the Brandenburg Gate. Some protesters even tore down the Soviet flag over the Brandenburg Gate. Soviet MPs tried to intervene, but were physically pushed back by British MPs. Patriotism rallied among the people of Berlin, leading to the creation of their own West Berlin government in December. In April of 1949, the Soviets hinted at letting up, and by 12.01 a.m., on May 12th, the blockade ended. Almost immediately, Allied supply convoys rushed into the city. General Clay, the man in charge of the American forces during the blockade, was saluted by 11,000 troops and welcomed home in America with a ticker tape parade. The airlift finally ended that September. Over two million tons of cargo were delivered by the combined USAF, RAF, and Royal Australian Air Force. To this day, the Berlin Airlift is remembered as a symbol of the close alliance between America, Britain, and Germany, and as a much-needed triumphant moment in the earliest days of the Cold War. 
you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and subscribe. I'm Matthew, and I hope I'll see you next time. Goodbye, goodbye, where's the dear baby dear from your eye? Though it's hard to part, I know, I know, I'll be sick of the death to go. Don't cry, don't die, there's a silver lining in the sky. Bonsoir, old sing, cheerio, chin, chin, na, boo, toogaloo,